Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at Thermal Takes Tough Power GF3 1350 Watt PCI Express Gen 5 natively supported NVIDIA 4000 series power supply with fully modular cables. Wow, that's quite a mouthful. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Thermaltake Tough Power GF3 1350 watt power supply. This natively supports the brand new RTX 4000 series graphics cards, should you have deep enough pockets to afford one of those. And if you have got deep enough pockets to afford it, then certainly this might be a power supply that you may be shopping for. Now, this natively supports RTX 4000 series with the new Gen 5 PCI Express connector, which has a 16 pin connector. So gone are the old eight pins and six plus twos. Now we're on a new 12 plus four pin, which basically has an additional four pins, which uses actual real-time data to monitor the graphics card and to basically tell the power supply, hey, I'm here, this is what I need, this is what you can do, let's talk about it. Then that's what we're definitely gonna do. So we're gonna go through today, do an unboxing of this. Sadly, because the RTX 4000 series isn't actually launched yet, I have no way of actually testing the cables and connectors and all that kind of good stuff, but maybe we can do a follow-up video at a later date. If you wanna see that happen, let us know in the video comments section below. And uh, you never know, it may just happen, although I haven't won the lottery, so potentially it might not. So starting off with the packaging, let's take a look at some of the key features. So as you can see straight away, tough power, 1350 watt power supply. It still makes me chuckle. Now, obviously, if 1350 isn't quite what you want, there are actually a ton of different versions of the GF3 power supply, starting from a relatively humble 750 watts, then there's 850 watts, 1000, 1200, 1350, and if you want to go right up to the top of the range, there is a 1650 as well, should you wish to do it. Clearly, this is designed with a little bit of future proof in. Again, this is fully ATX 3.0 compatible and PCI Express Gen 5 compatible, and it actually meets or exceeds all of Intel specifications. So yeah, this is a very highly spec power supply. It is gold rated 80 plus at 115 volts. Obviously that will be slightly better here for us in the UK because of the energy efficiency of the 230 volt system. So potentially it's kind of edging towards platinum, but yeah, they can't put that on the box. So yeah, take that as it is. So as it says on the box there, PCI Express Gen 5 ready, 16 pin connector that is included and ready to go in the box. ATX 3.0 compatible, smart zero fan. Now, if you're spending an absolute ton of money on a power supply and even one which is supping back energy faster than it can be produced almost, then keeping quiet is gonna be a great thing. Now you've got two options on here. You've got a smart fan you can turn on or off. Now in the off position, it just works as a normal, very quiet fan. But in smart fan mode, if the system's actually drawing less than 30% power, then the fan will be at zero speed. And obviously as things progress and it draws more power, the fan will speed up automatically. So yep, yeah, that's pretty cool if you want a silent system whilst it's generally idling. Also, it comes with 100% Japanese capacitors. Now, from what I can tell, I haven't actually opened this up to have a good look inside because I don't want to destroy the power supply, but it looks like it comes with Rubicon capacitors. Obviously, that may change. I'll try and get some detailed specs from Thermaltake to see exactly what is on the bill of materials, if that is possible. If I have, that will be linked in the video description below as well. But it's nice to see that they are using 100% Japanese caps, especially, obviously, this type of power supply. They are rated up to 105C. And also, this thing will work thermally at its peak capacity at anywhere up to 50 degrees Celsius as the ambient temperature, which is a bit more of a step up from what we're used to seeing. Most power supplies are kind of rated at that, around about 30C or even 40C. So this one actually goes up to 50C and still will maintain that efficiency. And if that wasn't enough, we've also got this wrapped up with a 10 year warranty. So definitely in terms of future proofing, again, ATX 3.0, it's been a long time since we've been with ATX 2.0 and 2.1, etc. So yeah, 10 year warranty is again, awesome. Although, to be honest with you, I think we would probably expect it at this kind of price point. And talking of price, at the moment here in the UK, this is kind of like almost like a pre-release. So because the graphics cards aren't out, this is one of those things we saw on pre-order in a lot of places. We're looking at this at the moment, places like Overclocker, Scan, UK, etc. Somewhere in the region of about 260 to 280 pounds, depending where you're shopping. Obviously, if you want the 1650s, it's gonna cost you a little bit more. And if that is a little bit much for your budget, then you might drop down to the 1000 watt or the 850 or even the 750 should you wish to. 
on the side of the box, just in case I haven't stressed this enough already, I'm gonna go over it again. This does support the latest PCI Express Gen 5 graphics cards. So NVIDIA RTX 40 series. I'm not entirely sure what's happening with the AMD side of things, whether or not they will also be using PCI Express Gen 5 connectors. Uh, we will find out in about a month's time when they actually do their release. So that'll be interesting to see if that is the case. I'm guessing it probably will be. So yeah, there is something to be kind of looking out for. Now something which is very important before we go into the unboxing of this, PCI Express Gen 5 is gonna be a big shakeup in the industry. Now a lot of power supplies, some of the older ones will do adapters. So you can go from your traditional six plus two pin and convert it into the new ATX 5.0 12 pin. But the extra four pins actually on the plug are super, super important. And that is what is gonna control the actual power output and input and also the demand, the draw, all that kind of stuff to make sure that your graphics card, which you've spent a ton of money on, is getting the power it needs and doesn't get overheated and all that kind of stuff. So even though you may have a slightly older power supply, which is ATX 2.0 compatible, but you can buy a adapter, do yourself a favor, get the right power supply for the job. On the back of the box goes into some more of the specifications. I'll give you some close-ups of that, but again, goes over some of the key features. So ATX 3.0 compatible, 80 plus gold certified, and also it does have a high amperage single 12 volt rail. As we've discussed numerous times, it comes with a PCI Express Gen 5 connector and also 100% Japanese caps, as we said, fully modular design. Now actually fully modular is gonna be, again, a massive thing, which I'm going off track again, but we will go into it because of the fact that the new PCI Express Gen 5 graphics card connectors have been newly ratified by PCIe SIG, which is the company which kind of does all the design and groundwork for these new connectors. They've actually said that this connector type is only suitable for roughly around about 30 insertions. So there is a lifetime on these actual plugs, both on the graphics card side and also on the power supply side. So if you see a power supply which has got a PCI Express Gen 5 connection and it isn't fully modular, I would be tempted to look elsewhere, especially when you're investing in this sort of money. The fact that this is a modular one, if worse things happen, and for some reason the cable stops fitting into your graphics card or has some sort of breakage, which potentially can happen, at least being fully modular and thermal take being the company they are, you're gonna be able to get hold of spare parts very, very easily. Uh, pretty much all the other stuff we've gone over already, so the output specifications, I'll put that on the screen for you. The 1350 watt is a pure on the 12 volt rail, so we're looking at 112.5 amps, and also it shows you on the back there the connector specifications, but we'll go through the connectors when we open the box. Also, it says about the compatible ATX 3.0 Intel specs and how it kind of meets or exceeds them, which is awesome. And also we've got some really good voltage regulation. So we've got all that out of the way. Let's actually take a look at this thing and see what we get for our money. So first of all, you get a install guide and warranty leaflet, all that kind of stuff. There is a power cable. Now you will need the power cable that comes in these. So don't think for one minute, you're gonna be using your standard normal kind of kettle lead or your IEC lead it is a different type of connector. This is because the amount of wattage which is going through here. So we'll take a look at that shortly. You do get a very cool bag from Thermal Tape to keep all your spare cables in and all the bits and pieces. So when you've built up your rig, you can put your spares in there should you need to swap anything out or add any new components. Now time for the last part of the puzzle. Now this has come extremely well packaged. I know it's just a power supply, but normally I'm used to power supplies just turn up in basically a cardboard box and that is kind of it. So this is really good. Really nice padded styrofoam in there to keep things nice and secure in transit. And inside we've got the modular power supply itself. So that's pretty cool. Something I do like as well, the fact that they've actually gone to the bother of putting a kind of sleeve on this thing. So uh, you can do your reveal and slide off the packaging. And this reveals the actual power supply itself. And it is actually a lumpy beast. This is almost, well, get on for two kilos. I think it's like 1.85 or something, but yeah, it is a, a weighty beast because there is a lot of technology in here, there really is. This has got additional signaling, like I said, for the PCI Express Gen 5, which I've said a million times, but I'm just trying to hammer that home. This is a new type of power supply, even though it kind of looks and feels and, well, it doesn't feel because it's very heavy, but it looks like a normal power supply for ATX. This is something completely new and it's something we're gonna have to get used to, I think, going forward. So on the sides, Thermal Take Tough Power GF3, 1350 watts so you can show off to all your friends in the side of your rig and it's got the same on the other side as well so depending which way you have your power supply either fan up or fan down you can still see the writing on the sides which is cool on the top goes through the specifications again which we saw on the box earlier but i'll give you a close-up of that so you can take a better look 
On the back, we've got our power supply entry port and also tons of ventilation in the typical kind of thermal take, um, almost Star Wars-esque Darth Vader's bathroom look. You've got two switches on the back, power switch on and off, pretty important. But the other one is your smart fan mode. So you've got the option to turn it on or off. And also there's a cool little sticker on there which goes over the top of the power plug, which tells you what is actually going on and tells you how to turn the smart fan on or off, which I guess is pretty straightforward, but it's nice that they've added it there anyway. When you look at the actual power plug itself, you can see this isn't a traditional kettle lead. This is something very different and very new and down to the wattages. I'm guessing it's because there's gonna be a 16 amp fuse in these plugs when they're supplied. Actually, the one that they've supplied us for review purposes appears to be a European one. So I can't even plug this in to see what the fans are like or anything. So I will have to trust them that the 14 centimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan is as quiet as they say. They say at full load, it's less than 37 dB, which should be pretty much quieter than, well, most of the things in your PC. And it's actually 37 decibels is probably less than a quiet room just with normal ambient noises. So this is effectively gonna be silent. Going to the back, so this is where we've got all our connectivity. So pretty much most of this is gonna be run of the mill stuff, which you've all seen before. But the key thing, which I said once or twice before possibly, is we do have the 12 volt HP power or high power connection. So this is your new connector. So that is a 16 pin, which is basically a 12 plus four. So the 12 pins are kind of like what we've seen before on previous generations RTX cards from Nvidia, but we do have those additional four signaling pins. So that is what is really, really important for this new PCI Express Gen 5 specifications. I cannot stress that enough. This is gonna be the difference between possibly your graphics card overheating or your cables melting and basically bad things happening. So definitely worthwhile if you're investing a ton of money in your new rig and your new graphics card, get the right power supply for the job. Now coming from me, I'm generally a cheapskate and I put whatever I can in my systems just to make them function as long as they're stable. But this, this genuinely is a game changer. We do need to take really close attention to these new specs. Anyway, moving on from that. So next up, we've got our CPU or PCIe connection. So this is gonna be your four plus four or your eight pins for going into your CPU EPS connector. So there's two of those included and there's lots of ports there. You've then got your peripherals. So that's for your SATA connections. You've got some of those there. You've also got some more peripheral ones on the bottom there as well. So five in total. You've got your 24 pin motherboard connector there. So yeah, no real changes there. That's all the same. And at the bottom there, we've got some more CPU PCI Express ones. So that is for your kind of, I hate to say it, but older style graphics cards. Well, they've done this really well actually, because if you're using maybe there's gonna be, clearly some manufacturers are gonna come out with maybe three eight pin connectors, PCI Express ones, the old style ones to get the power to the graphics card. Some are gonna use the new uh, 12 volt high power, but some are gonna use the older ones. So the fact that we've actually got three individual connections there. So if you do need three connectors into your graphics card, you can run each one of them off a separate connector rather than pigtailing or daisy chaining connectors, which is generally a bad idea, especially when each one of these is designed to give out 150 watts. If you've got a graphics card, which needs three of those, then yeah, it's drawing a lot of wattage and you don't wanna have that running off of one cable. So lots of connectivity options there for that. Now the next bit, this is gonna be very boring stuff, but some of you are gonna to wanna to know it. So let's go through and see what cables we actually get inside of our packaging here. So these are gonna be in no specific order. So first of all is gonna be our main 24 pin connection to your motherboard. So nice flat black tight cables there. I'll put the links on the bottom of the screen as well so you can see how long they are. The next one is gonna be the star of the show. Again, this is gonna be the one that you might wanna actually buy spares of. So this is your PCI Express Gen 5 connection for your native connection to NVIDIA 40 series cards or 4000 series cards, wherever you wanna look at it. So 4090, 4080s are gonna be using these, especially the NVIDIA reference cards. Again, four pins on the bottom there, 12 pins on the top. It's slightly unusual that they have actually braided this cable. All the others are completely uh, flattened out, but this is actually braided as well. So the problem that these are gonna have are gonna be when you actually have to start bending them because they are actually quite stiff as well. So. Yeah, might be worth investing in a couple of spares of them. It's a shame actually at this kind of price that they didn't include a couple of extras in there or at least one extra one just to be on the safe side. But I guess because the power supply only has one single output for that sort of graphics card, it is kind of understandable. But anyway, you get one of those included. So let's zip through the rest of them very quickly. So we've got our SATA connections here. So SATA cables, there's four of these included. Each one of them has three actual SATA connections on. So 
maximum of 12 SATAs on there. You've also then got a peripheral or Molex type connection. I like these because they've got the little push pins on there so you can push that to actually pull them out, which is saves wiggling them and stressing them. So that's really good. There are four connections on there for Molex. That might be for D5 pumps, that sort of thing, or older peripherals. Also included are two EPS style connectors. So one is a solid eight pin, which goes into most motherboards these days. And they've included a separate four plus four. So if you've got a motherboard that has eight plus four, you can just use one of those and leave one to one side, or you can plug in both of the eights. So again, those are included. Again, nice flat black cables. Those are gonna be a little bit longer than the other cables, especially the main motherboard one, just because it has to stretch further to go up to that EPS connector at the top. And finally, we've got our <laughs> old school connections for your graphics card. So these are your PCI Express connections. These are your six plus twos or eight pin connectors, which clip together again, nicely flattened out and you've got three in there. So if you've got a graphics card, which needs three PCI Express connections, you're absolutely fine. These are pigtailed as well. So there are six connections in total. So three leads, six connections, that should be more than enough for most people. And last of all, should you need it, there is a floppy drive style connector, which converts to a Molex. So if you've got some peripheral or maybe a pump or something or some kind of control box. In fact, actually some of Thermal Take's fan controllers do actually still use that type of connection. So that could be useful for that. So there you go, absolute ton of stuff there. Uh, lots of things to kind of be considering, especially if you're building a new PC. Coming up towards the end of 2022, going into 2023, ATX 3.0 and PCI Express Gen 5 is a thing. It is here, like it or hate it. It is going to start costing us more money. We can definitely see that. Graphics cards are costing more. Clearly, power supplies are costing more because basically it's effectively kind of two or three power supplies all thrown into one box. So, yeah, 1,350 watts is pretty insane. You think most people generally, maybe a 650 watt power supply in their system, this is basically two of those put together. So, yeah, you can kind of understand the pricing on there. Like it or hate it, it is what it is. And that is going to be the uh, industry going forward. So anyway, that has been the Thermal Take Tough Power GF3 1350 watt power supply. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Is it complete overkill or are you going to be one of those people that is going to be first in line for your 40 series graphics card? Let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely very interested here if you are. And if you are, uh, yeah, best of luck to you. Anyway, thanks for Thermal Take to sending this out for us for review purposes. They haven't asked us to say anything. I've just said basically as it is and trying to show you what you get in the box. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this going forward. And I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.